Hi guys, today I want to talk about the world's most dreaded programming language, at least according to stackoverflow.com, which I was directed to when I was talking to another uh, developer about a very popular programming language. I decided to pop into the most dreaded programming languages and I saw right at the very top of the list a language that I've been coding in for over 20 years and it is Visual Basic for Applications, or VBA. I found this to be very interesting and I thought what I would like to do today is to introduce you guys to VBA and to the history of VBA so that we can understand why it has become such a dreaded programming language. Now for some of you this is going to be old hat. You, you've probably done tons and tons of coding in VBA and you already know why you hate it or why you love it. Uh, but for a lot of you this is going to be new and it's going to be kind of a long history of a language that's older than you might think. I'm your host Sean McKenzie and thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data analytics and data engineering and I'm very happy to be talking to you today about VBA. So this year, like every year, Stack Overflow had its compilation or survey of all of the most popular programming languages as well as uh, the most dreaded programming languages. So in the most popular, we, we see what we might expect to see, those nice easy to use languages, the new ones like Python, uh, Rust, Go, and uh, TypeScript. And those are among the most progressive and sort of easy to use and, and uh, sort of sought after languages that we see today. And if you go to the dreaded language section, you actually see VBA right at the top amongst some others, um, many that haven't been used for a very long time or are just not sought after anymore. Now, I've been developing in VBA since about 1998, and uh, that's a really long time. And when I saw the ranking, and now I've discovered that it's actually been up there for two years, and I'm not surprised about that either. When I saw the ranking, I wasn't surprised. And uh, the ranking, as it says on Stack Overflow, it's, it's dreaded by users who are actively using that product. So it's not like people who got out of school and they're like, I don't like VBA because my professor told me it was bad. It's actually about people who are using VBA all the time and they don't want to use it anymore. But first, what is VBA? Well, VBA is kind of part of the Visual Basic 6 um, language that was uh, introduced in like 1991 or something like that. And it had many flavors. Um, one, one, of course, was VB6, which was used to build enterprise applications, and there was VBScript, which was a derivative of that, that was used um, uh, for things like system administration and, or, you know, scripting and things like that. And Visual Basic for Applications was built for the Microsoft Office suite. And so it allowed you to do all kinds of things um, from your Excel macros to uh, automating your, your Word document management and templates and things like that, and uh, access databases that could be, you know, accessed by several users. Um, VBA was sort of like this language that was behind the scenes, and it was very easy to use for the time and quite popular uh, way back in the 90s and early 2000s. And, and it was popular for good reason, because you could achieve so much with it uh, in, in a very short amount of time. And so no other language was used as much as VBA was for this purpose. So VB6, which was the parent language, kind of sort of died um, in the period from 1998 when it, when it sort of lost any new features or functions. It got a few and then it had a, a mainstream end of service in 2005 and then a total like, you know, long-term end of service in 2008. And what that meant was uh, that the, the language itself was not going to be continued anymore. It wasn't really going to be supported. Uh, 
but there were two variants that were continued to be supported. One was VBA, which was a derivative of VB6, and the other one was VB script. And those two uh, continued to be used, and, and in fact, VBA continues to be uh, supported in the latest Microsoft Office, whether that be Office 2019 or Office 365, you can still write your VBA code uh, for your little applications or macros, and you can do all kinds of stuff there. VB script still continues to be uh, supported and it's very useful for uh, server scripting, for automation of tasks like file management and all kinds of uh, log reading and all kinds of cool stuff like that. But most people today, they prefer to use other tools rather than VB script. They might use PowerShell or, or they might do uh, console applications in .NET or th something like that. Um, so VB script is kind of uh, falling off in terms of usage there because people don't really want to use it for that either. Um, but nonetheless, it is still supported. So when was VBA used? Well, according to Wikipedia, VBA made its entrance uh, in Excel 5 in 1993. And from there, it got many version changes and it was expanded to include Microsoft Word and where you could do all kinds of stuff in Word and then Microsoft Access and and Project and, and a bunch of other stuff and Microsoft also uh, licensed out the technology so that it could be used by other programs um, not not belonging to Microsoft Office and so it was very useful for those uh, uh, features as well so that people could customize and automate little things in other kinds of software. So VBA, going back, it was introduced in 1993, and that was about 10 years after I wrote my first lines of BASIC in 1984 on a Tandy color computer in extended BASIC. And now I know you kids think that people looked like this or drove cars like this in that time period, but I assure you it's not the case. Anyway, going back to it, so VB6, uh, received the legacy tag after 2008 and uh, the .NET version of uh, BASIC uh, got quite a bit of support but not a, not a huge amount of developers converted over to Visual Basic .NET. Um, most of them went to C Sharp and so which was a, a competing language, it was a sister language of VB.NET um, at the time. So the future of Visual Basic was sort of really up in the air and it continues to be so and so not a lot of developers are choosing to start projects with it these days. Uh, some are and uh, they have many successful projects uh, in, in Visual Basic .NET as well. However, VBA did survive all of this and it is supported and included in the latest versions of Microsoft Office and even though it hasn't had any new updates in probably a decade, so a bit of reality check for everybody. Take a step back and think about the percentage of companies or the number of companies that you think use Microsoft Office in their daily operations all around the world. And if you think about th that number of companies, you can think that the majority of those companies that are over a very small size probably have some VBA code in their operation. Now imagine that each programming language that came around over the past 30 years had some market share or, or you know, dominance of, of the programming world uh, during that time. And each of those had a little bit of, of market share. But now imagine that every company, almost every company that used all of those languages probably had VBA code running somewhere in their network. What this means is that VBA is one of the most widely used programming languages in the world. So why was it popular? Well, VBA allowed regular users, like desktop users, who had their Excel spreadsheets to cook up all kinds of crazy Excel macros and financial uh, you know, models and things like that, 
and it allowed uh, guys who were engineers to say, hey, I'm going to build a database in Microsoft Access and I'm going to code it to do all these things. And uh, it extended this sort of power of automation to regular users, but it also gave, uh, if those users brought those projects to the IT department, they, the IT department could write something very quickly if it was a very small project. One of the problems was that when these guys would build their little database applications or the you know financial guys would make their Excel sheets and then those guys would move on to new positions or roles within different companies, of course they left behind their code, which in many cases was a steaming pile of However, despite all of this, there are many, many cases where uh, the applications that were designed by the end users, the business users, uh, perfectly targeted uh, a need that a particular company had in order to gain a strategic or competitive advantage over their rivals. And so there are, there are many, many cases of, of that happening and many stories where uh, there were database applications that were created that gave companies an edge or gave them an ability uh, to do things that they couldn't do before or there was no uh, off-the-shelf product to, to use for that particular purpose before. So, over more than 20 years of using this technology, uh, I actually have seen uh, dozens and dozens of uh, VBA applications that were eventually sort of migrated so that the backend database was put onto something stable like SQL Server and, and, there, were, and there were many many uh, good outcomes because of that. However, these solutions generally pushed the technology to its limit. Uh, so VBA started to be used for things that uh, it wasn't really designed to scale to, to, to do or to take over. So VBA often led to uh, development that could scale, but it could only scale painfully. And so you would see lots of solutions using remote desktop or Citrix um, connections and things like that, um, which, which actually made them work great. But um, if you wanted to scale to more than say dozens or maybe even a hundred users, then you needed to start looking at um, other solutions like uh, you know web-based applications and things like that which meant redevelopment and so uh, generally speaking um, the scalability of VBA uh, is a really big issue and that's one of the problems that uh, VBA had. So what happened? Well generally speaking uh, over the last 10 years there have been really no improvements to VBA um, I mean, in 2010, there, there was a release that sort of gave some new features and things like that to do with the newer versions of Office, but, uh, but VBA hasn't really been updated since then, and so uh, it hasn't really kept up with what's happening in the computing world and the, the new sort of uh, requirements that are, are needed of programming languages today. And after all these years, it's really a language of the Microsoft Office platform and it's sort of tied to Microsoft Office and, you know, the, the Windows operating system. So when developers are asked to code in VBA, they're really reaching into the past um, to, to write this code in, in, you know, an IDE that's kind of like old school now and the features aren't really there. Uh, to do a lot of the things that they would like to do with the programming language um, that they might see in newer programming languages like, say, Python. And I have to say that there is definitely a bias that is taught in schools and, uh, and other places to not regard anything with the name BASIC on it as anything uh, serious in the programming world. And so that generates a lot of bias as well. And it's generally cool to hate on, on BASIC. But for the IT guys that have to take over some of these projects that have been built by you know, staff in, in various departments or whatever, uh, what they run into is that they're unsure of whether uh, experienced or seasoned developers 
actually did the work on this uh, this new application or whatever and so they have to go and check the application to make sure um, that it actually runs correctly and doesn't have any major issues or might be hard to support or or that type of stuff. So the big speculation is is what's going to happen with uh, with VBA uh, now that the world is clearly moving on and uh, and you know also it looks like in that dot net um, is not going to be supporting Visual Basic in the same way that it supported C Sharp over the past years, um, where it kept both of those languages up to date. And so the language of Basic, uh, Visual Basic, is kind of up in the air. Also, there's new languages like Python that are extremely easy to, to learn and to use. And so those languages are probably uh, a good fit for whatever replaces uh, VBA as Microsoft Office continues to evolve. But nonetheless, what we're seeing from Microsoft right now is that the latest and greatest Microsoft Office environments are 100% supporting the 32 and 64-bit versions of, of uh, VBA, and so uh, the coding environment is going to be there at least for the foreseeable future. And what this means is that there's going to be more projects to support and, and more development work that's going to be needed, needed to be done in VBA and a lot of developers really don't like that. Uh, they, don't, they don't want to do more work in, in VBA and so uh, I think that the survey that, that Stack Overflow did is really good in sort of highlighting this, this fact that we've got this language out there that's inside of Microsoft Office and there's applications that are making things useful for people and nobody wants to work on them. But I guess only time will tell. And so my vote is for uh, Python to replace VBA in the upcoming versions of Microsoft Office if there indeed is a replacement for VBA uh, in the coming years. And I think that, uh, I do think that Python would be a good uh, solution for, for that, a good replacement for that. Python is easy to use, it's, it's widely used, um, it's easy to implement, and it has a lot of great modules and, and libraries and things that uh, make it a wonderful language to, to uh, use. So what I would like to ask all the developers out there is, why do you hate VBA? What's the number one reason you hate VBA? And without naming names or giving away any information about projects in the past, can you describe a situation that was an absolute horror story uh, surrounding VBA and it might highlight the reason why uh, developers dread it so much today? Thanks for watching today. I hope you enjoyed our discussion on the dreaded language of VBA. And uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you would like to subscribe, please subscribe to the channel. And when you see the bell, click the bell so you'll be notified of uh, any new content that I put up. And uh, thanks for watching again, and I'll catch you later.